the Bahamas to about Palm Beach and Jupiter, 80 to 83 degrees. That's when we expect some rapid intensification. But I don't think it's going to get any stronger than a Category 1, and I feel pretty confident about landfall in the Jupiter to Palm Beach area. That is uh, late Wednesday night and Thursday morning, and then going by us is a tropical storm, but we will be on its wet, windy side. Increasingly wet and windy late Tuesday and Wednesday, but the main day will be Thursday with potential flooding. We'll keep you updated. This has been a severe weather update from the First Coast News weather team. Download the First Coast News app for live weather updates anytime. Or let's talk about what's going on here. First of all, we call it the big three, and this will adjust somewhat. But if you just want to know the headlines, here's they as they are now. And of course, these will be adjusted as we get closer to when it makes landfall. And then as it being Nicole gets closer to us, don't focus too much on the center of the storm. Several reasons for that. First of all, uh, it looks like landfall with pretty good amount of confidence will be in the Jupiter Palm Beach area, but because we expect it to be a hurricane, category one hurricane for only a brief period of time, and that's still a big deal, but still that means it's not going to be a major hurricane, which would be three or more. Uh, for that reason, there's not going to be much of an eye wall. And the reason I mention that is, for instance, with an Ian, 90% of the damage and the tragedies with Ian were within that narrow eye wall. That's that ring of devastation around the eye. We're not going to have that, although there will be higher winds there. There'll be a larger area of just plain storms. And this is our big concern for us. The combination of tides being three to five feet above normal and heavy rains. Some of us will have heavier rains with Nicole than we did with Ian. And you combine those two at high tides, and that's why I expect uh, some pretty widespread flooding, especially with Thursday's high tide during the first half of the day and then later during the evening. And then on Friday, the thr threat will shift to more in the way of severe storms. Okay, if we're not going to focus on the exact center, what do we focus on? Well, just the large storm. So again, although maybe an eye wall is going to try to develop and head toward Jupiter and Palm Beach, notice the larger storm fully by late Wednesday starts to engulf northeast Florida and will eventually uh, impact those of you who are southeastern Georgia. Here's another way to look at it. Look at the wind field. And I think this shows it pretty good. So by midday Tuesday, we start to see maybe an eye forming. But look at the large area that is purple of winds over 40. Now, no doubt about it, that's good news. At least this isn't a large area of hurricane force winds. But that large area of winds over 40, it's about two to three times the size that Ian was, and it creates what we call a fetch. Now, a fetch is a meteorological term, especially considering uh, out over the ocean, and that is that winds blowing from the same direction over an area is called the fetch, and the larger that area is can offset the winds. In other words, a larger fetch with winds aren't, that aren't as strong could actually produce higher seas than a smaller fetch and higher winds. Does that make sense? Notice what happens though. Again, all the storm system comes ashore here and then heads northwestward. That fetch or that push coming in from the ocean continues to push into northeast Florida and southeastern Georgia Wednesday, Thursday, in fact, even into Friday. Bottom line, look at the numbers. So here we go to Thursday. Notice the surf, 12 feet at 12 seconds. For those of you that don't follow numbers, the longer the period, that's what the seconds is here, then the more punch per foot. And this is a rare event for us, for us to see at least 12 foot surf with 12 second period. And maybe this number jumps out at you more so. By Thursday, we call it a fully developed sea state. We could see seas of 12 to maybe as much as 25 feet. Now, no doubt about it. That means it's going to pound those beaches that are don't have as many defenses because Ian took so much sand away, but also because we're going to have that water push th pushing through during the high tides tomorrow. And on Wednesday, most specifically Thursday, that's going to push through the inlets into the estuaries, the intracoastal and the St. John's. In addition, all of you folks from St. John's County South had heavy rains with Ian, including Flagler and Putnam and even portions of clay from Duval North. We didn't have that much rain uh, with Ian with Nicole. Watch what happens. So this is Wednesday. This is the dry air. Uh, this is our heaviest rain potential, but watch how that works over and then completely covers, especially northeastern Florida. And although maybe some dry air tries to come our way with Friday, this is the core of the heavier rains. Watch what happens. Comes right back over our region. So 
when you combine the high tides, and remember, for a lot of us that are connected to the drainage systems that drain down into the intracoastal, the creeks, the St. John's, if that's not down, then it's actually going to back up through the drains. You combine that with heavy rain, and we have some flooding problems. So for St. John's and Flagler, these are a lot of numbers, but bottom line, I think this gets us pretty close to what we had with Ian, maybe not quite as bad. Once we, though, get into Duval County, because of the addition of the rain, I expect water levels with Nicole could be about eight inches higher than they were with Ian. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but if during um, Ian, your property or your business missed flooding by just a few inches, that could be a big deal. We'll keep you updated. And as we go up the coast, Nassau, Camden, and Glen counties, pretty similar numbers to what you saw with Ian. Pretty similar numbers. Now, for those of you in the Black Creek watershed, uh, you did not get that much rain from Ian. If you get five inches, I think you'll be fine. If you get 10 inches, then we will be watching for the possibility of Black Creek or at least uh, the North Fork flooding. That would be on Friday. Now, for those of you around the Swanee and the Oki Finoki, uh, I do expect you to have some rain, but not enough to cause major issues, I don't think. My main concern for those of you over the Swanee and the Okefenokee will be for the threat of tornadoes, and that'll be on Friday. Now, for those of you that really just wonder how long do we have to hang on until conditions improve, no doubt about it, the farther off to the future we get, the iffier it becomes. But I saw some stuff with the computer models this evening that gives me a pretty good amount of confidence that we will see weather conditions improve dramatically by Saturday. We'll keep you updated. I'm sure there'll be some adjustments to the forecast.